now we've got a couple of questions to do where the substance is going to change temperature, do a phase change, and then change its temperature some more. So the first question is for a block of ice, 120 grams of ice, at minus 10 degrees C, it's put into a microwave oven, which has got a power rating of 700 watts, and we want to know how long will it take to have water at 90 degrees C. We're given the specific heat capacity of ice, the latent heat of fusion of water, and the specific heat capacity of water. So I'll write that data up, and then we'll have a look at the question. Right, this is the information we were given in the question. We've got 120 grams of ice. It starts off at minus 10 degrees C. We've got a 700 watt microwave oven. Then we want to get water at 90 degrees C. And we want to know how long it takes. So it's asking for a time value. At this stage, there seems to be one more equation we're going to need to use, but it's not specifically part of this assignment. It was part of a previous one, 14.1 power is work done over time. Okay, so we're going to use that. You'll see how later on. Specific heat capacity of ice, so that's C subscript I, is 2050 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. I've reused the subscript I to differentiate it from the specific heat capacity for water, which is 4,200. And then the latent heat of fusion, which is for water and ice, so there's only one value here. The latent heat of fusion, I didn't need to put I or W there. 3.34 times 10 to the 5. Let's do the calculation. The question has been broken up into stages, so I'll we'll start off by looking at part A, where we need to work out the heat energy required to heat the ice from minus 10 degrees C to the point where it changes phase, which is at 0 degrees C. So ice melts at 0 degrees C. So we're going to work out how much heat energy is required to get it from there to there. Okay? Delta Q, the heat flow, this is a specific heat capacity question, so we need to do M C delta theta. C of ice because it's ice throughout this whole process. And delta theta. Like we've seen before, we need to use mass in SI units. So we need to convert 120 into kilograms. Divide that by 1,000, and the mass is 0 0.12 kilograms. OK, let's do this. 0 0.12 multiplied by C of I, that's 2050, multiplied by the temperature change. Do the larger value minus the smaller value. Okay, so that's 10 there. And the value we get is 2,460 joules. That's our first heat flow value. Second thing, we need to work at, now it's at the melting point, we now need to work out how much energy is required to melt all of that ice. So here, melting the ice, which is which happens as we've said, seen before, at a constant temperature of zero degrees C. Delta Q, let's call this delta Q2. So we've got delta Q1, which is equal to that delta Q2. M, the mass times latent heat fusion. Nice easy calculation. Times this value here. Just make sure you put this value into your calculator correctly using the times 10 to the x button on your calculator and then the 5. Okay? So it's two, the two buttons to get the times 10 to the 5. If you've got a calculator with an EXP button, use that and then the 5. Right, anyway, other than that, it's a straightforward calculation and then we get 4. 0 times 10 to the 4 joules. That's 40,000 joules. We've got delta Q2. Part C, we need to work out the heat required to take 
uh, water, because once the ice is melted, it's now water, from zero degrees C up to 90, okay? So water boils at 100 degrees C, so it ha hasn't got to boiling point. It stays water. This is another specific heat capacity calculation. That's MC, I'm using CW because it's water, and then delta theta. The mass is always the same. We're not losing any, any mass here. So, C of water, 4,200. And the larger temperature is 90, so 90 minus zero. When I work everything out, I, that comes to 4.5 times 10 to the 3 joules. So I've got delta Q1, delta Q2, delta Q3. Now I need to add those all up. So D is what's the total heat flow? It's delta Q1 plus delta Q2 plus delta Q3. And if we add all those values up, we get 4.7 times 10 to the 4. So that is the total heat flow required, or the total amount of energy required to melt our ice. So take our ice from minus 10 degrees C, melt it, and take it up to 90 degrees C water. Last thing to do, which I'm going to do over here, is work out how long it takes. So that's, that's part T. T, the time, is equal to the total amount of energy required divided by P. Okay. Now that, uh, sorry, the W value is equal to delta Q. Okay. So delta Q over P. So we do our 4.7 times 10 to the 4, all over the power rating of the microwave oven, 700 watts. And for that, we get 67 seconds. So it's 1 minute and 7 seconds. That's our first preliminary calculation. I'll grab this off and we'll do the second preliminary calculation, which involves two phase changes. Right, this is the second preliminary question. <clears throat> the question is to calculate how much energy is released if we have 50 grams of steam at 130 degrees C and it's changed the ice at minus 5 degrees C. So we need to work out how much energy is released here because it's cooling down, it's releasing energy. And how long does it take? So we need to work out a time value here. Um, because we're going from steam to ice, Firstly, the steam will need to change to water, and then it will need to change to ice. So there's actually both phase changes involved here, going from steam to ice. Uh, so we've got steam, that goes to, that cools down, then it changes to water. The water cools down, and it changes to ice. Um, this, the, ch the phase change happens at 100 degrees C here. That's the boiling point of water, and then we have the melting point of water, which is zero degrees C. <coughs> so we know those temperatures. We've got a few stages of the calculation to do. They're broken up for us, parts A to G. So, oh, and if we were extracting the energy by some process with a power rating, uh, the power rating in this case is 110 watts, so we'll need that when we do the time calculation. So let's get started with part A. Part A says calculate how much heat energy would be released if we reduce the temperature of the steam at 130 to its boiling point of 100 degrees C. I've written the specific heat capacities and the latent heats up here, so we've got this is C for steam, then water, then ice, latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of fusion there. So the values are there. Mass I will quickly calculate. It's 50 grams, which is 0 0.050 kilograms. Again, need that in SI units. So now 
Because we're reducing the temperature of steam and it stays steam throughout, then it's a delta Q1 is a specific heat capacity calculation. That's MC for steam, delta theta. So that is 0 0.05 multiplied by 1,900, multiplied by, <coughs> if it's going from 130 to 100, that's 130 minus 100, so multiplied by 30. And that value for the heat is 2,850 joules. <coughs> That's our first heat flow calculation. So we've brought the steam down to its boiling point. It's now going to condense into water. We need to work out how much energy is required to change it to water. Delta Q2 is... M times the latent heat of vaporisation. If I just put a line through once we've used them. This is the same mass. The mass, we're assuming the mass doesn't change. The mass of steam, water and so on. So that multiplied by 2.26 times 10 to the 6. And that comes out as 1.13 times 10 to the 5. Q2. We're only going to use each of these values once because once it's changed from steam to water, it's not going to then change back into steam by cooling down. <coughs> Delta Q3. This is cooling the water down from its boiling point to its freezing point, so or its melting point. So this is a change of 100 degrees C. It's a specific heat capacity calculation using specific heat capacity of water, Cw. So that's 0 0.05 times 4,200, which is my value there, so I'll cross that off. Multiplied by 100 minus 0. You can see I'm taking away the, the smaller temperature from the largest one, so large one minus the small one. Large one minus the small one. And that value is to 21,000 joules. That's delta Q3. Part D is now at its melting point or freezing point. So we're going to use the latent heat of fusion here. It's a latent heat of fusion calculation. 0 0.050 multiplied by 3.34 times 10 to the 5, and uh, so we've used that one, and that comes out as 17,000, so those are the first four calculations, next the final amount of heat that is released as the what is now ice cools down from zero degrees C, which is the melting point, down to minus five. A specific heat capacity calculation using the specific heat capacity of ice, which is that 2050. So 0 0.050 times 2050 multiplied by the larger temperature out of zero, minus five is zero, minus minus five. Uh, I'm only interested in the size of the heat flow here, not which way it's going. I know it's being released. So that's why I just do the larger temperature minus the smaller temperature. 513 joules. So we've got all of our heat flow values up here. In part F, we need to work out what's the total amount of heat energy that's released. So that is delta Q1 plus delta Q2 all the way to delta Q5. When we add up all of those values, we get 1.5. Well, if I write out full value, 1.54363 joules, which is the two significant figures, 1.5 times 10 to the 5 joules, or 150 kilojoules.
Okay, so we've got our total heat flow. Now we can use the power to work out how long that would take. So if we were using some kind of cooling system which requires energy, then this is our power and we can use that power to work out how long it took, so how, how long it would take at 110 watts. We need to rearrange this for T. T is delta Q over P, uh, which is 150 times 10 to the 3. Divided by the power, 110, and that equals T is 1,423 seconds. Now divide that by 60 and we get it in minutes. If I say to you, oh, it takes 1,400 seconds, you're like, uh, okay, I can't really fit that into a frame of reference. But if I say it takes 23 minutes, then that makes more sense. So that's how long it would take at a power rating of 110 watts to, to extract that amount of energy and therefore cool our 50 grams of steam at 130 degrees C down to ice at minus 5 degrees C. So that's a calculation that involves a few, both phase changes in addition to changing the temperature with specific heat capacities. Those are the calculations for 14.3.